Hello everyone, I am Fyrus Khan and today I am back uh, with a brand new class. I am back with Business Studies Dexel AS. Uh, we did this chapter. Uh, this chapter is called uh, Business Objectives and uh, we finished it. It was a pretty interesting lesson. If you go back, if you can see what we did, uh, right? So we talked about business objectives um, and uh, we talked about uh, smart objectives. We talked about two, the two most important business objective, which is survival and profit maximization. Uh, I hope my students are here. If you're here, just type yes so that I know you're here, uh, right? Um, today, we have to start with uh, you know, other than survival and profit maximization, um, these are the two most important objectives. So other than survival and profit maximization, we have other objectives that are also quite important. Uh, here we go. We have sales maximization, which means selling as much as you can, increasing market share, Cost efficiency, trying to reduce cost and increase profit. Employee welfare, taking care of employees, thinking about, about them. Customer satisfaction, right? Again, taking care of customers, giving them the best service you can. And of course, thinking of, about the people around you in the, uh, in the local environment. Okay, so let's start. So let's start with the first one, sales maximization. Now, if we look at this picture, what can you understand from this picture? So this is a place in New York called Times Square. And as you can see, look at the mouse. There are advertisements and advertisements everywhere, right? And I was fortunate enough to be, to go to this place and it's actually, um, uh, you know, so bright because of the different kinds of uh, advertisement material that you see. Um, so one way to maximize sales is advertising, right? You can do different kinds of advertising. You can do billboard advertising. You can advertise on television. Nowadays, social media advertising is a very cost effective. Uh, it's apps almost free. And, uh, you know, it's it's quite fast. You can change it. So you can use Facebook. You can use um, Instagram, Snapchat. And there are other opportunities available also. So, uh, you know, when you, when you uh, advertise a lot, people will get to know about your product. People will get to know about your brand. Yes, and therefore, they will start buying more. Now, if I don't know, let's say you sell T-shirts. Now, if I don't know about, uh, you know, your company or the kind of T-shirts you sell, then how am I going to buy your product? So you need to advertise, uh, right? What you can do is you can create a social media post and you can boost that post for $5, $10, uh, and it'll go to different people, uh, you know, depending on your target audience. Uh, yes. So there we go. Again, while advertising, you have to remember, you have to rem remember a small company like us, we're a small company, a small company like us, like FES, cannot do television advertising because it is expensive, right? Um, so uh, you have to understand that. But a big company like BMW, they can go for TV advertising because they have a lot of money, they have a lot of cash. Uh, but again, uh, you know, apart from cash, there's also one thing you need to understand the nature of your business. OK, now, if it's a um, um, let's say uh, if it's a, 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 if it's an industrial product, you don't need to do television advertising. Uh, right. Uh, because um, industrial product are mostly sold are mostly sold to businesses. Um, so you need to look for other forms of advertising, like advertising on specialist magazine, uh, going to trade fairs, exhibition. Uh, but, you know, for BMW or a mobile phone, uh, sometimes uh, schools, uh, uh, education institutions, they also do TV advertising. So you, re you, you really need to understand the suitability, the appropriateness of your product. 
and then choose the media. But but if you don't advertise, people will not be aware of your product. So this is one way maximizing your sales. You can do advertisement and there are different options available. Um, th this part is blank because I want to show you another image. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen this kind of image, are familiar, are familiar with this kind of image. Sale 30% off. What does it mean? Okay. Um, and, and we see it often. Now, they are giving you off. They are giving you reductions. Why? Is it because the product is not good? Is it because, um, you, know, um, um, you know, as a company, they are... Uh, they think about you? No, because they want to maximize their sales. They want to sell as much as they can, right? Uh, sometimes, you know, during during Eid, during Christmas, or during Pohala Boishak, you will see uh, people giving different kind of offers and sales. So one of the most major prime reason is to maximize sales. So, um, uh, you know, the, the idea is, okay, we will make less profit per product. We will make less amount of profit, but we, want, we will sell more in quantity. Okay, so in this way, you can maximize your sales. Uh, right, uh, so it's a good way. Yes, you also give off, you also give discounts because sometimes when the product is old, for example, when a new telephone comes out, a new cell phone comes out, or a new TV comes out, uh, what happens is, um, uh, you know, the older models are reduced. Yes, so that that also happens. But then you you will see a lot of sales um, offers uh, because. They want to maximize their sales, right? Great. Um, let's go ahead. Um, now, uh, you know, um, maximizing sales helps you to sell more product, more number of units. Now, if I'm selling this, let's say, headphone, um, if it's $50, if I reduce it to $35, I will be making less profit, but I will be selling more. Yes? So that is good in a way. And, and when I'm selling more units, that means I will also have more market share. When I have more market share, I can grow because I'm selling more, I'm making more profit, I have more sales revenue, I can hire specialist staff. What does it mean? I can hire better managers. I can hire specialist HR staff, HR managers, um, or marketing manager uh, who will be very skilled and who can help us to grow the business. Uh, yes. Um, so um, yeah, and and it's it is a good good sign, good symbol. Okay. Um, so when we talk about market share, let me show you something. So let me give you an example because it's important to know what market share means. So we will do a step by step process. So let's take the smartphone market since we're talking about smartphones. Now in 2020, here you go, in 2020, quarter one. Now there are four quarters in a year. Quarter one means the first three months uh, of the year, January, February, March. Quarter two is April, May, June. Quarter three is July, August, September. That's how it goes. So the first quarter of 2020, 275.1 million units of smartphone was sold. 271 million units, 271 million units were sold in uh, 2020 quarter one, which is less compared to 2019 quarter one. So if you uh, if you compare the first three month sales of 2019, it, it, it was uh, less, 312.3 .3 units. Now it may be because you know because of COVID 19 because there was a lot of tension between uh, America and China. So these are all external factors. Uh, you have to keep that in mind because external situation always changes. So this is the figure. And now we will have a look at different, um, uh, you know, companies selling smartphones and we will look at uh, market leaders. So first, Samsung. Samsung sold. Out of 275.1 million units, Samsung sold 58.4 million units. Okay, 
Um, so they are the market leader. Market leader means they are powerful. They have influence over suppliers and buyers. Um, uh, yeah, they dominate the market and people will listen to them. Um, second, let's have a look at second uh, one. Um, Huawei, they sold 49 million units. My God, Huawei, you know, the, um, they're not, 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 not an old brand. They just, they just started, you know, and, and, and they're doing quite well. So out of 275 million units, they've sold 49 million units. You can find the market share easily. Okay, so if you take 49 and if you divide 275.1 into 100, you will get uh, the percentage. Okay, it's quite easy. Even for Samsung, 58.4 divided by 275.1 into 100, you will get market share. For market share, there is a formula. Okay, so you take the market share of that specific company, write it down, uh, of that specific company, so let's say you want to find the market share of Samsung, 58.4, divided by 275.1 into 100. You, you will get a percentage. Um, third is Apple. Apple is 36.7 million units. Uh, they, 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 they were demoted a bit. Uh, Apple is struggling a little bit in the current scenario. So out of 275.1 million units, they sold 36.7. Next up is Xiaomi. Okay, they sold... They sold 30.2 million units. Uh, Xiaomi is giving a good competition to, to Apple. Um, fifth is Vivo, 24.7 million units. And you have others, other brands that are all collectively, uh, they sold 77 million units out of 275.1 million units. Now we will have a look at the pie chart. Now usually uh, for market share, what we do is, we represent them on pie chart. Usually, you can also do it in bar charts. You can also do it in line graph. But I feel pie charts, representing pie charts in market share, uh, for market share, is, is more clean. It's more easy to understand, OK? Now, I was talking about the formula. So if you take 58.4 and divide by 275.1, and if you do into 100, then you will get 21%. So Samsung has 21% of the market share. They're the market leader, okay? 21%. How do we know? We calculated it. So you take how much that specific brand sold, divide by total number of units sold into 100. Write it down. Come on, write it down. I purposely did not include a formula because people get scared when they look at formula. Um, uh, so I just wanted to do it by logic. So you take that specific, specific um, uh, units sold by a specific company, 58.4 or 49, 36.7, divide by 275.1 into 100. So Samsung is leading by 21%. Uh, then Huawei, 18%. Uh, then we have Apple, 13%. Uh, we have then Xiaomi at 11%, Vivo at 9%, and others, 28%. So that's market share. And, and we know the first three uh, are the market leaders and they will have a lot of power. Yes. And, and uh, you know, a more market share means they are selling more units, more number of phones. Okay. That means the sales are high. The profit levels are high. More market share or market leader, leader means... Um, uh, they have a lot of power. They're a big, big company. Yes. So I hope uh, this market share thing is very clear to you. I've shown you the current, uh, the latest figures of uh, the smartphone market, uh, right? Uh, let's go ahead. So uh, most businesses, they would prefer a large market share, okay? Because more market share means you're selling more number of units. And selling more number of units means you're selling more phones, you're having more profit, you're having more revenue, all those comes. And, and, you know, the first three market leaders like Samsung, Huawei, Apple, they dominate the market. People will listen to you. Suppliers, stores, and retailers will stock your product because your products are, 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 are you know, they sell like hotcakes in the market. Uh, yeah. So think about that. Okay. Um, 
So um, yes. Um, so uh, and and they will have more control over price. They will have more control over the market. Um, and and when you're selling more, that means you can you will also enjoy reduced cost. Because do you remember what economies of scale is? Does economies of scale mean uh, you know producing in a large uh, quantity, uh, and therefore that helps you uh, you know uh, the average price to come down? Yes, it exactly means that. So when you're producing more, when you're making things, you know, for example, if I make hundred pieces of this T-shirt, it may cost me ten thousand taka. But if I make 200 pieces, it may cost me um, 13,000 taka. So the cost is reducing. So when you make more, you will enjoy economies of scale. Average price per unit will come down. So you will enjoy lower cost per unit. Okay. Um, so, but however, sometimes you may have problems. Uh, yes, like, you know, there may be economic problems like recession. You may have problems like COVID-19. There may be downturn. Uh, sometimes, you know, business look, they look forward to cut costs all the time. Uh, we've talked about cutting cost. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, instead of, instead of uh, giving your marketing, um, uh, let's say, give, instead of giving your um, uh, making marketing social media post, I give you an example yesterday, uh, you know, we make social media post. We used to make social media posts using agencies, but instead of that, now we make on our own and that reduced the cost a lot. Instead of, let's say you're a burger joint, instead of um, uh, buying fries from external suppliers, make it in your restaurant and that will save you cost. Uh, instead of hiring full-time workers, hire part-time workers. So big companies, uh, they're always trying to reduce cost, okay? Because when you reduce cost, uh, you will make more profit, maximizing profit. And we've spoken about this uh, in, in the last two classes, actually, okay? Um, but however, the problem is when you try to reduce cost, it may impact your quality. Be careful, okay? Uh, you may lay off your staff. You may get rid of your staff. Be careful because if you have less staff, you may not you may not give a good customer service to employees. Your service levels may go down. So be careful. Sometimes you may find new suppliers who are cheaper. That's good in a way, but again, you have to be careful because if you're not if you're not careful, then new suppliers may give you uh, you know uh, bad quality uh, raw materials. Then what happens to your brand? Okay. Um, Sometimes uh, you can use recycled materials, like you know, instead of instead of um, instead of buying resources all the time, you can recycle. Which means, you know, uh, for example, if you're talking about smartphone, um, let's say, um, you know, I can give this phone to Apple. They will keep it. They'll give you give me a certain amount of money, and they can use the parts of this phone to make a new phone. They can use the screen, they can use the chips, the motherboard, the screws. There are a lot of things that can be used. Uh, uh, you know, the parts can be used to make a new phone, okay? Um, so um, uh, there are different ways you can cut cost. You can lay off staff, you can find new suppliers who are cheaper, you can use recycled materials instead of buying them that will reduce your cost, um, develop new practices, find new ways which will um, not consume a lot of resources, that will consume fewer resources, right? So think about that. Um, but, but again, when you're trying to cost, cut cost and increase your profit, be careful. It may impact your quality. It may harm your quality. Uh, so make sure uh, you know, you you think about quality, right? And I, I told you, like, when, when we were making Facebook posts for FES on our own, we thought about quality, that, you know, we are bringing it from a professional marketing agency. They are experienced, they are trained, but if we do it, 
uh, will it impact, will it harm the quality? So we thought about it and we did the necessary training. We hired the right people. We hired the right team and we went through a process and then only everything, uh, you know, um, fell off in the right place. Um, so that's cost efficiency. Um, we talked about market share objectives. Okay. Uh, we talked about profit maximization. We talked about market share, uh, cost efficiency. Okay. Um, now, what do I have? Oh, nice. Look at, look at this picture. What can you see from this picture? A very shabby environment. Probably it's a factory. Very dirty. Uh, would you like to work here? Uh, I'm sure most of you would not like to work here. So uh, it is not a safe place. It may uh, You may have a lot of health and safety issues. Uh, you may fall off. It's slippery. It's dusty. You may get diseases. The building may fall off. It may catch fire. There are a lot of health and safety issues here, um, right? And a lot of um, workers would not want to work here. And it's not a good, safe environment. Workers also will not be motivated because it's not a nice place to work, right? Uh, as far uh, as it looks, because as an employee, think about it. Uh, you will, you will not, you you will never want to work in this kind of place. But look at this factory, glossy, nice, clean, um, and and uh, you know uh, there will be no health and safety issues. You will be motivated. You will be contented and satisfied in this kind of place, okay? And, and workers will be more productive, more efficient. So we need to think about the workers who are, who are working for us. We need to think about the social welfare, employee welfare. We need to think about them, right? We just, you know, uh, this kind of factory will be very easy to build. We can save a lot of money, but this will be expensive. But in the long run, employees will be more productive. Employees will be more efficient, right? So employee welfare. And, and, and nowadays, employee welfare in the 21st century has become quite important, okay? Um, uh, because, um, you know, if, if you have a nice place like this, a nice factory like this, that employees will be happier, will be better motivated, more productive, more cooperative, more flexible, less likely to leave, absenteeism rate will be low. Yes. So these are the keywords. Look at the keywords. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, you can take a number of measures. Uh, you can improve the work environment, make it clean, less noisy, less crowded, don't have too many people clustered at one place. Um, think about, um, do you remember uh, Rana Plaza, Rana Plaza incident? Um, I still remember because I did a research on it in, uh, in my university and it was a very broad research where I had to analyze different articles, um, journals, newspaper articles and talk about it in my assignment. Um, and, and it was huge. Um, you know, the factory was in a dilapidated condition. The workers refused to go inside the factory in the morning because they had major cracks in the building. Yes. And they refused to go inside. But but the manager forced the workers to go inside. And, and you know what eventually happened. Uh, it was, it was a de devastating condition. And it really impacted me. I really felt bad. Uh, uh, yeah, so think about that. You don't want to be in that situation uh, because it will also negatively impact your business. So make it clean, less noisy, less crowded. If there's a crack in the building, you should call the maintenance department and get it repaired immediately. Okay? Uh, stitch in time saves nine. It's a proverb. If you do things in time, then it'll, uh, you know, later on you will... Um, you will not be confronted by emergency situation, okay? Um, so yeah, make sure the working environment needs to have clean water, clean toilet. These are basic needs, okay? Um, you, you must give proper breaks. 
uh, to uh, to the employees. If they work eight hours, make sure to give them, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes break to drink water, to have lunch or to have some food. Uh, yes, make them comfortable. Uh, I used to work in a factory in the UK. Uh, I used to work, I think, eight and a half hours and I used to get break for around 45 to 50 minutes, 20 minutes lunch break and then two short breaks, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, okay. And, and, you know, small things like this increases your productivity, increases your efficiency. Um, for example, now if I study 10 hours straight, uh, it will lower my productivity, right? Uh, and it's not good. So take breaks in between. Let's say you've studied two hours, um, go and sleep in your bed, take a nap for 30 minutes, for 20 minutes, close your eyes or listen to music or walk or go out for a drive or just walk somewhere. These things increases your productivity, okay? Make sure, uh, you know, uh, the factory has necessary tools, equipments to work properly, to work safely. Uh, yes, um, give them safety equipments. For example, if you have a chemical factory, make sure um, the workers are well protected. Make sure uh, they wear a protective overall or, or uniform that will, uh, you know, uh, that will save them or protect them from harmful chemicals. So these are the things that you need to think about. Yes, uh, if workers are working the coal factory, they need to have the right boots and, and uh, protective clothes. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, you can also ask them to do regular exercises, organize fitness sessions. Yes. A lot of company does that. A lot of company will give you, uh, they give employees a free gym passes, uh, you know, to take care of themselves because when you're healthy, your brain works, uh, quite well. Uh, you know, uh, it is more productive. It is more efficient. You're more energized. Uh, yes, and improving welfare, if you take care of all these things, improving welfare, giving them good working conditions, look at the picture again, it's, 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 I mean, there's a huge difference, it will reduce absenteeism rate, See, it will reduce staff absenteeism rate, means people will be less absent, uh, they will come to work, they will be more motivated, the, the business will have a better image. It'll increase motivation, okay? You will comply with health and safety legislations because Bangladesh government has a very strict rules nowadays, okay? So you need to have a proper working environment for the workers, okay? Make sure um, you have that. And ultimately, when you have a good working place, you will attract good quality people, good quality employee. Right? I know that setting up this kind of factory is expensive, but then take your time, build slowly. It is possible, right? For example, FES has a very nice um, educative education environment. And I did not do it at, at one go. Uh, I did it for two, three years, slowly and slowly and slowly. So it's possible. It is possible. Right. If you have any questions, you can put it down here. We are doing fantastic. Um, <laughs> Zavir. Yes, sir. The proverb, a stitch in time saves nine, is also applicable for studies as well. Yes, it's applicable for everything. If you do it now, then you will save yourself uh, rather than doing it later when you have an emergency situation. So it's always uh, better to do it now. Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Um, great. You guys are enjoying the class. I can see uh, a lot of them are viewing and a lot of them are pressing like button. Great. And then of course you have customer satisfaction. And if you want to run a business, if you want to continue, you need to meet the needs of customers. Okay. Because the key to success is you want loyal customers. Loyal customers means you want customers to come back. Now, if someone comes to FES, let's say to do O-levels, 
I try and make sure they also come for A-levels. I try and make sure they do courses like IELTS or SAT or, uh, you know, um, study abroad counseling. So when a customer is repeating your product all the time, when they're coming back all the time, that means they're happy with your service. And that defines as a loyal customer because companies will always try to exceed customer expectations. So you will have to meet the needs of customers. And if you have loyal customers, which means returning customers, customers who comes back often, it symbolizes, it shows, it depicts, it illustrates that you are successful. Yeah. So that's customer satisfaction. And how can you achieve how can you achieve customer satisfaction? Number one, you can train the staff, right? Communicate properly, body language, being polite, professional, friendly. Training is the first key to success. Then customer feedback. Let's say um, I bought a smartphone from your showroom or from your store. And um, you can call me after five days uh, or email me five days that, sir, how was your um, experience in the store? Who helped you? Would you like to give a rating? That helps. Um, when, you, when you get to know the bad things about yourself, it's good. Like I, what I always do is, you know, I do a lot of online classes. So people watch my classes, my friends, my family, my sister, uh, my wife, and they constantly give me feedbacks, the bad ones. And I to take those bad ones and I convert them into good ones. Um, and, and that's good. So you want feedback, not for the good things. If people say good things that are very good, but you want feedback for the bad things. Okay, identify what went wrong and how can you better them? And all company does it. If you go to a hotel, let's say in Bangkok, and when you check out, they will send you an e email immediately because they will have your email address in their system and they will send you an email that how was your stay with us? Can you rate us? Who helped you? Did you like the food? Will you come back? Um, all those things. Okay. And if something goes wrong, they will call you and they will listen to you. Okay. Um, and, and if if and if you're not happy with the service, sometimes they they also give you um you know, special discounts, right? Then the third thing is that nowadays it's quite easy to interact with customers in social media, uh, no matter how big you are as a company. So interact with people, have a two-way flow of information, communication uh, that keeps it engaged, that keeps the customer engaged. Like I talk to a lot of people uh, from our Facebook page. They send me messages and I, I also send them. I don't know them. I haven't met them, but, but uh, you know, it promotes the business. It shows that you're welcoming. It shows that, you're, uh, that you care. Uh, not everything should be measured in terms of money, okay? Um, so, um, um, so, yeah, um, there you go. Um, and, and, um, Yes. Uh, so, and, and, and the 21st century has become very competitive. You can't do everything for money. So you need to do these things. Zavir, I can see the comments. Um, today is your birthday. Happy birthday, Zavir. I hope you have a very good future ahead. Uh, you're a great lad. You come, uh, you're always on time. You're doing homework and, and you're very serious. And I wish you all the best, Zavir. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, and we can celebrate once this lockdown is over. I don't know, you know, when we, when we can come out, but, but yeah, we can have a small celebration. Great. We can go ahead. So training, customer feedback, interact with customers, especially nowadays, it's easy using social media. Then, uh, deal with customers' complaints. If somebody complains, you don't run away because you want customer feedbacks for customer complaints. Okay, so um, so deal with it. If somebody has complained, call them. Like I had a problem with my cable TV. I won't name the company, and I was really upset with them because I told them that I don't watch 
a lot of television. So can you just switch off the line for two months and I'll call you back? So now I I want to watch television. I, I called them that, you know, can you just reconnect the line? And they said, Apnar to line reconnect the amra off Korean. And then I had to pay extra bill for nothing because I did not watch television for two months. And then later on, the manager called me and you know the manager um, apologized and he adjusted the bill. So deal with it. Deal with it promptly. Not, you know, don't call them after three, four days. Deal with it now. Call them right now and fix it. Okay. You can also monitor using mystery shoppers. Do you know what mystery shoppers is? It's a very interesting concept. So um, what you can do is, what you can do is, let's say you have a store, let's say you have a lot of branches and you don't have time. Um, let's say you have a lot of grocery stores around the country and you don't have time to go to every um, uh, branch. So you can hire mystery shoppers. Uh, they, they will work for your company and you know they can go to different branches and they can just buy uh, things, uh, uh, you know, and, and they will give you reviews, what's going on, what is good, what is bad, right? So uh, they are mystery shoppers and, and, and uh, your employees will not know that they are from your side. Uh, they, they, they will go, they will do an inspection, um, uh, you know, a secret inspection, a mystery inspection, and they will see if everything is good or not. And protect the company the high in terms of grocery stores, in terms of airline, uh, airplane, airline industry. You will have uh, mystery passengers. You know, a manager will just board your plane. You will not know that 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 he's the manager of that company, and and you know he will take the flight, and then later on he will give you a review, and and then you will notice that this person was a mystery passenger on behalf of the company because he was inspecting, okay? And it happens in a big company, uh, in big companies, okay? And, and you should know what customers want. So you can achieve customer satisfaction through training. You can um, do customer feedback. You can use the social media to interact with customers. Uh, you can deal with customers' pro problems effectively and then, um, provide customer services, okay, all the time. So that's customer satisfaction. Um, do we have anything else? What is this? Oh, okay. What do you see in this picture? Uh, it is rubbish. We are polluting the environment, yes? Oh, that's really, really bad. And, and uh, environmental issues has become a big problem um, in the business world. Because if you go back 50 years, 60 years, nobody talked about taking care of the environment. Nobody talked about corporate social responsibility. Nobody talked about green environment. People were building factories. People were busy polluting. But now we have come to a certain extent that it's not possible at all. Just look at this condition. It's filthy. Yes, so um, it's bad. It's harming the environment as a business. Make profit, not a problem. Make as much as profit you want, but you cannot harm the environment around you. So nowadays, now at the recent time, yes, as a business, you can make profit. You can satisfy needs and wants of customers, but you will also have to look after the environment around you. You cannot... You cannot uh, pollute the environment, okay? Uh, it is not possible. It is, um, you will be, uh, uh, you know, committing a crime if you do it because nowadays there are strict legislations, there are strict laws, and companies are following it. Companies are recycling, okay? Look at this, sorry. Look at this picture. So much of pollution. And this all happened in the last 50 years, 100 years. Nobody thought about it. The problem with us is when we start a business, we don't think ahead. Think about it. Okay, so recycling is, is important. Not polluting the environment is important. Thinking about the environment is very, very important. Okay, so which brings me to social objective. So business, apart from making profit, 
apart from satisfying the needs and wants of customer, apart from satisfying needs and wants of shareholders, you also have to meet the, uh, the needs for the local area, showing concerns for the local area, okay? Local community. You should be able to coexist, make profit, and also do not harm the environment. And how can you achieve it? Keep the noise level down. Uh, do not pollute. Find ways to recycle water. Find ways not to uh, do air pollution, okay? By minimizing population, um, uh, you know, um, uh, let's say you, 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 you have a grocery store in the local area. Now, you don't want to have too many people uh, at odd times in your grocery store that can create the noise level, that can disturb the um, residents of the neighborhood. So create a, a time, create a system, and that shows that you care about the environment. Uh, now, if I'm teaching wrong things to children, then I, uh, I should be punished, yes? So I have to teach good things. I have to think about the environment around me, the local area uh, around me, the neighborhood around me, right? Um, then as, as, as a business, your job is also to employ local people. Because when you start a business in your area, let's say in Thanmundi Road 4, then you're also um, uh, opening this uh, prospect of employment. So local people will apply for jobs. So that's good in a way. Help people. Help em uh, in employment. Okay, Teach them good things. How can you work together? Right? Uh, communicate between the local community. Um, visit schools, make charities, make donations. Uh, nowadays, big companies like Grameen Phone and a lot of companies worldwide, Apple, Google, they donate millions and millions of dollars for children's education uh, to reduce air pollution, uh, to reduce um, uh, you know, water pollution. They do all sorts of things. And that's known as corporate social responsibility. So you have a certain responsibility as a business. And that term is coined as corporate social responsibility. Corporate means business. As a business, you have a certain degree of social responsibility, right? And, and um, uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of big companies here, Grameen Phone, Bangla Link, Roby. They will donate generously to education institutions, uh, to different charity organizations, NGOs. And it shows that they care about the environment. Actors, they will do it. Musicians will do it right? If, even if you educate one child, uh, it's important. Like, uh, uh, you know, we teach, there are one or two students at FES, we teach them for free. And I do it every year, every year. Um, and, and, and it's a must. Uh, I don't take money from them. Uh, uh, if they do O-levels, O-levels, A-levels, the full thing, uh, we cover it. Um, and, and I think as an education institution, it's our responsibility. OK, I'm not showing off, but it, it is everyone's responsibility to do, to do it. Um, for example, I'm teaching on Facebook for free. So this is also responsibility. Whoever likes, they can, they can watch it. So we finished the chapter. It was a long class today, 43 minutes. But I did not realize it was so good. Uh, OK, we have a lot, lot of comments today. Um, Muhammad. Uh, Rafu Ryan said, you're a great presenter, brother. Thank you so much. Comments like this uh, really motivates me. Thank you so much. Um, keep uh, watching our videos. Share it with the family and friends. Thank you so much. So today, we finished this chapter. So today, we uh, looked at we looked at sales maximization. We looked at market share. We looked, looked at cost efficiency, employee welfare, customer satisfaction, social objectives. These are other objectives apart from survival and profit maximization. These two are very important. And then comes, then comes these things. So I will sign off today. Thank you very much. Um, please do not hesitate to like our Facebook page, Firos Education Services. You can send me friend requests on my personal page. It's not a fan page, Firus Khan. 
You can also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fires Education Services. We are constantly uploading a lot of material, uh, IELTS, a lot of videos. Uh, so yeah, thank you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.